uh, before we hopped on this broadcast. Finishing just off the podium in fourth place. I was kind of hoping you were going to bring a medal back that I could wear during this broadcast. <laughs> I'm just excited we finished the race. We had, we had a great race. It was probably the best race we had, but there, there was quite a few of us that it was our first time in the war canoe for the year. <laughs> and uh, and as I said before, war canoes are terrifying, so uh, the first time back uh, can always be a definitely time to break it back in, but these ladies in the IC4 uh, are off. How long do you think it's roughly going to take them to complete this race here? This one's going to be a little bit slower than the open race because it is younger athletes, but I'd still s expect them to be sub 205 for the winning crew. And as we saw before, there are some athletes that just raced a couple minutes ago. Uh, we just saw a, a, a bunch of these athletes, you know, they must have just gotten off the water, turned around and go back. Uh, but we also see lots of siblings. So uh, Julia Lilio Sen is now in this boat for Micmac. We just saw her sister on the podium over there. It's really a family community at the National Canoe Kayak Championships. As you can see, it looks like Micmac's got a little bit of a lead on the uh, nine time out of 10 championship winning Berloque. Uh, all looking very in stroke though and focused, not really deviating from the race plan. How much of a danger can it be, Sam, when you do decide to, you know, peek over your shoulder at the other boats? Uh, you can definitely go out of your lane doing that because as soon as, especially these boats, because they're so long, they take a little bit longer to, to correct any steering issues that you have. So you want to keep your eye on the prize and still just look at that finish line. It looks like Mick Mack in lane six, giving themselves a little bit of an edge on Burlok in second place, but don't count out that team they have. Uh, nine championships out of 10 years under their belt. But Micmac slowly starting to pull away. But keep an eye out on that outside lane, out on lane two. Mississauga looks to be gaining some water into this last 50 meters of the race. Yeah, you can see their stroke rate really climbing up as they're, they're going to go and try and pass Masqua. And it looks like they're coming up right even, so this should be a great finish. But it looks like a very strong finish by the Micmac crew, Featherstone, Hennessy, Liliosen, and McDonald. And Mississauga Who? came right past Masco as they come into the final set of buoys. And that will be Burloke in second, and you are correct, Mississauga really coming out of nowhere there at the end in the last 50-meter push to pass Masqua and capture that spot unofficially, of course, with the bronze medal on the podium. Yeah, you could see during this race there's a ton of great technique with these girls. You saw them set up and they had a big A shape with their bodies, a capital A, so we call it an A frame, and that's, that's the key to the canoe stroke. They're getting their hips right up the boat, and that's where all the power starts driving from as you rip them back and, and use that to initiate your stroke. So now it becomes that Burloak is going, still going home with the medal, a silver medal, not a gold one like I, uh, you would almost expect from the club that has won this competition nine times in the last 10 years, uh, including last year they were the championships, Penny Father uh, and Little, two athletes in this boat. Uh, we're also in that one. Here are unofficial results. Osend, Featherstone, Hennessy, and uh, McDonald from Micmac going home. Champions with the gold medal. Burloke in second. Mississauga just snatching that uh, bronze medal away from Masqua in the dying minutes of, in the dying meters, excuse me, in, 